So I want to talk about um, a website I built uh, three years ago. That's this website. And uh, it's a job board. It's essentially a place to list jobs for the technology industry. Um, if you pick it, something, here's a job in Hyderabad. It says it wants a senior Java developer. And uh, it's fairly straightforward. It's a website where there's a listing of what the job description is about, listing of what the company is, what's expected. And if you're interested, just apply for the position. Basically says it wants a CV and GitHub profile, so that's for me to fill out, submit. It's as simple as that. Now what I want to tell you is uh, this website represents a bunch of political choices uh, on my part. And uh, in fact, this is completely normal. Every piece of technology embodies the political choices of its creator, even if it's invisible to the user. Okay? And it's interesting to understand what these choices are, why do they exist, where do they come from, and what do they mean. Um, so to start with, I need to clarify that this is not what I do for a living. This website is a hobby. It um, was something I built to tell people to stop bothering me. Um, so what I do actually is uh, stuff like this. I organize events. This is an event I did about three years ago again, um, two and a half years actually. And uh, what I did in this case is got a bunch of people who worked with this particular technology called PHP to come and talk about how to do something a little more advanced. So essentially it was a place for uh, people in the industry to advance their knowledge by one level by simply talking to people who are one level ahead. Okay? And uh, so fairly particular uh, sector. If you use PHP, let me show you how to do PHP in the cloud. Okay? Um, the terms that I'm using here don't really matter. It's just about saying this is about getting you one step ahead. And uh, now this is an event that essentially had a bunch of talks. Um, here's someone from Flipkart talking about how they make the website work. Um, same from Flipkart again, talking about a different aspect of the website. Somebody from Zynga talking about how they build games and what happens when things don't work out and so forth. So, when you do something of this sort, um, and this event had about 200 people in the room. Now when I have 200 people in the room who are all interested in one very particular topic, someone's going to come up and say, can you give me the email addresses of all these people? I am hiring for my company. I would like to send them a notice that I am hiring. This one will say, F off, you know. Um, this is private information. These people do not come here to get jobs. They came here to learn. I am not going to spam them with junk mail from some company that has jobs and wants to hire and just because you're so excited about hiring you're offering to give me money for this, I'm saying no, I'm not going to give you that. Um, so what you do instead is tell people, I'm going to put up a whiteboard, please take a piece of sticky note, stick it on the wall and say I'm hiring, please come and talk to me. Okay. Uh, so we started doing this. We started getting people to go out and post on a job board that was at the venue saying I'm hiring. Um, now this works as long as you're at the physical venue. But this website here continues to exist two and a half years later. People are still going to look at this and say, wow, this looks interesting. Can I have the contact details of all these people? Okay. And this got kept going on and on. And eventually I had to say, OK, why don't I just build a website where you can go post your own requirements? And this was when I started looking at what does this mean when you say, let's go build a website where you can post requirements. So I started looking at job boards. Um, let's look at this one. Mockery.com. I'm sure you've heard of this. They have ads all over. Uh, it's a fairly famous website. But you look at this and say, man, what clutter. Do you have any idea what's going on on this page? Uh, what are you looking at? Are you supposed to be a candidate? Are you supposed to be an employer? Does the website make these assumptions and say, if you are this guy, here's your answer? I can't make any sense of this site. Um, you need to start looking and say, here it says, get jobs without registration. What does it mean? Are you supposed to say, I want to be told about jobs and here is a way to get it without being saying that? I mean, it really doesn't really make a lot of sense. Um, if you try clicking on random stuff, it'll give you a bunch of links that says, uh, this is what's available. And it says, assistant manager, information technology, no interesting. Associate professor, information technology, I certainly don't want to, I want to write code, not teach. Uh, manager, no, I don't want to be a manager. Head information and communication technology, I really don't want that. I want to write code. Now, you look at this, okay? This website is just giving you a lot of clutter. Doesn't really make sense. Um, what's the next monster? Okay. More clutter. Doesn't really tell you anything about what's going on here either. Now, um, obviously you've figured out by now that uh, a job involves two parties. There's the employer and there's a candidate. Okay. 
it starts helping if you get a little more focused and say, who are you after? This website, it's clearly not obvious. Um, it's all kinds of things going on over here. Now, next company. This guy is very focused. We are all about recruitment. Your company has a requirement, we will help you find a candidate. It's got nothing for candidates out here. Um, but this now gives you an interesting situation. Who are these people? So this now is a company that says, we will find a candidate for you. We are the recruiters. Uh, how do they work? Then they say, in this case, they say they're cost effective because you only pay 10,000 rupees. Okay? Um, which actually, trust me, is low cost. Uh, because once you start digging into this, you realize that the way the industry works is the recruiter, who is this middleman who connects a candidate to an employer, essentially takes one month's salary as their commission. Okay? If the average IP salary is between 30 and 40,000 rupees, that's the commission for finding one person. Okay? Um, and that sounds like a lot of money to put into someone who may not even stay for two years. You know, it's like going to a house broker where you saw a house, you paid the broker one month's salary, and then you get an 11-month lease. And the end of 11 months, the owner says, you know, I'm done with you, move on, I want the next guy. He said, boys, you paid for one month's salary as commission, and the owner kicked you out. As a tenant, you make the choice and say, no, I'm going to stay in this house because I want value for money. But in this case, for a job, the employee do not pay, the employer pay. If the employee leaves too quickly, the employer has lost a lot of money. So that's essentially the situation in the industry, that there are companies and candidates who don't want the recruiter in the middle because the recruiter is not really a neutral party. The recruiter is essentially there to make money off this scheme and go on. And uh, this is really why a company like this can come in and say that uh, we are the low-cost version because we don't charge you per candidate, we only charge you for our time. That if you pay me 10,000 rupees, I'll spend one month giving you random resumes. If you like somebody, great. If you don't like somebody, you only lost 10,000. Okay? But that's their model. What happens here is they just keep sending random junk. Because they're not getting paid for actually placing a candidate. They're getting paid for sending you junk. So companies try this and say, you know, we paid these guys less money, but we still didn't get anybody useful because they send me completely random people. Okay? So what happens here is, um, to use a metaphor from an offline space, is this. Um, this is your typical Kirana store. Um, one of the aspects of the user interface of the store is you walk up to the store and tell the storekeeper, I want this item. And the guy says, yes, I have it. He'll go pick it up from the wall, give it to you. Okay? So it's essentially a search-driven interface. You tell him what you want, and he'll get it from the shelf. You're not allowed to walk into the store and look around. Okay? This is the supermarket which is a walk-in interface. It's a browsing-oriented interface. It tells you, come in, have a look at what's on the shelf. You like it, pick it up. There is nobody standing there to bother you about it. In fact, if somebody doesn't, you tell them, boss, I'm not interested, more away. You know, that, that's what happens, right? Somebody comes in and says, sir, can I help you? You say, no, I'm just looking. You know, that's, that's what we do in a supermarket. But in a Kirana store, you always ask for the person to find you something and give it up. Okay? So this particular aspect of the search versus the browse interface is something that you saw in all the previous sites, and it's something that has been part of the web from its infancy. This is yahoo.com in the year 2000. This is what it looked like. Um, as you can see, lots of clutter. Lots of things going on here. The idea of yahoo.com was that today you want to see the internet. You heard about this fabulous thing. You heard there are things called websites. You want to go and look at some nice website. What do you want to look at? You have no idea what you want to look at. You want to look at something random. So you say yahoo.com says there are arts and humanities website. Let's go look in there. Let's go see some nice arts and humanities website. Now, any of you who use the internet in the 90s, I'm sure you have done this. Okay? Um, this was the quintessential browsing interface of the internet back then. On the other hand, was what was supposedly the search interface. The website's gone. Let's see if it comes back. Um, which essentially was about saying, search for a keyword, and we will show you something that matches what you're searching for. Uh, this was Alta Vista in the year 2000. Back then, it was the most popular search engine. Um, it doesn't look like a search interface, does it? It's the same damn clutter as the Yahoo website. Okay? Now, this was part of the web's evolution, that this little bit over here is the actual search box. And the rest of it is a way to say, if you don't know what to look for, maybe look at something random. Um, and the big change that happened was a website that came up at that point called Google. 
this was Google in the year 2000. Uh, unfortunately, the logo is not loading, but if you look at Google today, it's the same damn website. One logo, one search box, search until then we don't show you anything. Okay? So browse versus search has been one of the two ways to construct a user interface. And I'll come back to this now and explain to you why these two choices are relevant. But first, let's get to the politics side of it. There's a fairly um, well-known passage from the Bible. It says, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Um, I'm sure you guys know the context for this. Now, there's a fairly popular spin-off on the statement that says, blessed are the geeks, for they shall inherit the earth. Um, it sounds like a joke, but I want to convince you that it's not. It means something fairly significant. And uh, this statement should uh, take some time to sink in, but probably tell you what it is. It says, architecture is politics. Does anyone want to take on the statement and say, what does it mean? This is a blog post by Mitch Kapoor. Uh, you've probably never heard of Mitch Kapoor, but he created Lotus 123. So I'm sure you've heard of that. So someone who clearly had a very significant role in the evolution of computer history goes on to make a statement that architecture is politics. What does it mean? It essentially means that the way you construct something will define how people use it and therefore how they lead their own lives. And that really is what it means when you say that you will build a search versus browse interface because it says the architecture of this page of how you are supposed to interact with it will determine what you do with it. This website wants to send me a random direction. It doesn't care for what I'm actually interested in. This website wants me to tell it what, it, what I want first and then it will show me the answer. Okay? And that's only the surface area of what we mean by architecture's politics. The most fundamental aspect of this, uh, which is embedded in the construction of the internet, is what's called the robustness principle, also known as Postal's law. It simply says, be conservative in what you do, be liberal in what you accept from others. Uh, this is a foundational statement of the internet. This is how the TCP IP protocol works. If your computer can connect to the internet, it's because the design of the network says it's okay for your computer to make a mistake when it sends data, but it's not okay for another computer to reject those mistakes. Okay? Um, and this essentially is how you can build an experimental piece of hardware that may or may not completely and properly implement internet protocols, but will still continue to work, which is really what allows computers to get online, despite the fact that most implementations actually are faulty to some extent. So this, in a sense, is a political statement. It says that we will build this software in a way that it accepts mistakes, but it tries best to not make a mistake by itself. Okay? So now let's get back to a job board. You saw the crap that these guys built. You look at this and say, what is going on over here? It doesn't really make any sense. So I went looking for more job boards. Has somebody done this properly? And um, then I started looking at um, job boards designed for a very specific purpose in mind. Now this is a job board that says we work remotely. It's only for jobs that don't require you to be in a physical location. It's for jobs that allow you to work from anywhere in the world. And all of them are that sort. So it says, now here are very specifically cooperative jobs, very specifically customer service and support jobs, and so forth. And um, the new ones are all posted in the last one day. And now this one's obviously much clearer. It tells you, first of all, right at the top, that this is what the jobs are about. Then it tells you that this is a cooperative job very specifically. Click on it to get more details. Um, another website, Authentic Jobs, once again, is similar. It's only for designers and so forth. So after I started looking at this, and given that in the early days we were doing sticky notes on whiteboards, and I had to come up with something that looked distinctive enough that people would remember it and say it's the website that looks like that, I ended up with this website. So this is how I ended up with a website that looks like a bunch of sticky notes. Okay. Now, so far it doesn't sound like I made any political statements by doing this. It sounds like I was just being opportunist. So it gets here. So let's look at this a little more carefully. Um, lots of jobs out here. Here's a company that's posted three jobs. So all those stickies that we have bunched together. This one has two jobs. So there are two of them together. 
Now, what is what did I do when I did this? When I built an interface that says, if you have posted multiple jobs, you only occupy one position on the job board. And all of your jobs appear as a bunch. What this means is I have made a choice that says, I will not let you shout out and clutter my space with completely your jobs only. You are not allowed to get more attention than somebody who has only one job. See, political choice number one. Second choice is, he says, this is how you post a job. Awesome coder wanted an awesome company. I'm giving an example and says, go add details. Let's go post this job. Now, for the sake of um, putting this in quite simply, I'm going to say, yeah, yeah, I don't care for the rest. Let's go submit this job. What does it say? Come on, write your own headline. Yeah. So, political choice number two. Please think about what you have posted. Okay. Now, this is necessary because a lot of people don't really think. And they say, I desperately want a programmer, yeah, yeah, fill everything, submit. Okay? And that is clutter on the front page of the job board. Because you are now pushing out somebody else who is being a little more detailed. So I need to say, boss, do something more sensible. So you say, okay, awesome coder wanted, I mean it for real. Lazy programmer or lazy recruiter tries to submit. Once again, rejected. Why are rejected? Well, I give you a message that I wrote myself that says you're not allowed to use stupid words like that. Um, okay, one more adjective. So yeah, let's go rock star. I mean, after all, everybody these days is like super good programmer. Right? That's what I want. So you're not allowed to use that word either. So you come up with a bunch of words like this and say, these are the words that we see people abusing in the industry and we will not let you use it. You're not allowed to use a term that has become meaningless just because you want to be like somebody else and you are a follower. So this extends a little further, you know. Uh, okay, what can be done with this? You hate these guys. They can't stop telling you that they're from IIT. You're not allowed to tell you anybody you're from IIT anymore. So that's the choice that I made on this job board, that I don't care if you're from IIT, you're not going to advise that fact. Okay? Um, now this obviously means I'm being discriminatory. I don't care if you're from BICS. No, BICS people have no problem advising that, but it turns out they don't do that. Okay? So in fact, I put this down in the terms of service. Um, among the terms of service, position number five says you cannot be a recruiter. If you are a recruiter trying to essentially post for free on this job board, find a candidate and charge your client, I don't care, I'm getting you out of this place. Go tell your client to list for themselves, you're not getting a commission for you not doing the work. You're not actually finding people, you're just waiting for someone to apply. So among other things, you may not discriminate on the basis of the fellow's education institute. You know, people say I only want top tier colleges, I only want the guy who is an IIT BITS graduate. Not allowed. You may not discriminate on that basis. So these are choices that I made, and they essentially determine what you see on the front page. When you go to the front page, it looks like this. When you essentially go to the front page, that um, okay, there's my window. Closure. Okay, so that one. So when you essentially go to a front page that has a bunch of jobs, part of that listing over there is for candidates. See, a candidate who comes to this job board has to look at this and say, this is not full of crap. And for me, it's a question of how do I get rid of the crap employers in a way that is essentially guiding them towards better behavior. That says, you may not use these terms. You may not do a certain kind of recruitment on this job portal. If you're okay with that, Please go ahead and list. And what this essentially gets you then is a job board that has a character and that brings a community that comes in because it represents something to them. It represents the kind of quality that they're looking for in employers. And uh, if you want to look at um, how does it actually work out. So I'll just pull out some stats for you from the database. So I'm just connected to the back end. I will uh, get you a stat on how many users are using it in the last one year.
So today is the 31st. So let's look at people since 31st Jan last year. 18,000 users have used this job board to find jobs. Okay. Uh, how many of those were, uh, how many jobs have been listed? 6,000 jobs listed in the past one year. How many of these actually got views? 328,000 jobs viewed by different people. So that's essentially jobs into people who look at those jobs. This actually implies that there is a lot of activity going on. People are actually looking at jobs and doing something about it and applying to them. Um, how many applications? Now this is daily count. That's how many applications were submitted by candidates every single day since uh, September last year. So you can see that it's always in triple digits, except on weekends when it drops. Uh, the last one is today. 68 people applied for a job since this morning. Okay. So clear example of this actually working. People are applying for jobs, finding jobs, and so forth. And to most of these people, they don't see the political choices that I made. When I decided who's allowed to participate over here, okay, and on what terms they're allowed to participate. Because the candidate never sees any of these prohibited words that an employer is told. For a candidate, it just looks like a bunch of interesting jobs. They go in, apply, and they get a response. For an employer, they push towards behaving properly. Okay? So that's really what I wanted to say. And this, I'm telling you, as a creator of this website, for most users, you'll only see one small aspect of any piece of technology you use. And therefore, these choices may not be visible to you, but they always exist. But the person who's building this is always thinking about these things and making these choices, sometimes accidentally, but they are doing it. And these are political choices. Okay, so that's about it. Okay.